Justin Hawkins right again. Good day to you, it is I, Justin Hawkins. This is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts. Okay, so I'm going to look at some of your uh, comments, uh, missives, and uh, respond to them accordingly. Um, Ian Margol, uh, Margolic, Margolic says, um, aside from interviews, the press, and promoting your albums, what is the hardest part about being a full-time musician? Is writing daunting... Recording difficult, touring a pain. All right, well, I'll tell you, writing is daunting because it's a huge undertaking. If you sort of, I always procrastinate very heavily before doing anything that sort of involves recording or writing. Um, just because I know that once I start, uh, you know, and I think most musicians are the same, really. Like, so before, if you're going to start, before you start, you, you just try and do anything else. Um, because you know that once it once the process begins, you're in it, and you won't be able to walk away from it until it's finished. So, you know, I think the dauntingness comes from the fact that it's going to eat up a lot of your life <laughs> until it's finished. Especially if you're doing an album, it's that's actually that's actually the worst part. Touring isn't like that though, because you just can't procrastinate. You can't delay a tour. It's booked months in advance. You got to go and do the work. You know. So, in a way, touring's a bit easier. I think. Um, at least in terms of the dauntingness of it. The hardest part about touring, though, is being away from your family. That's, you know, obvious one, really, but uh, you miss the people that you love the most, and it's uh, it's really hard sometimes. Um, but the best thing is doing the shows, because that's actually the reason why... That's the thing that everybody's... I think most people who do music, they do it because they love seeing the little faces in the front row, and they love playing their guitar solos and the excitement and the, the roar of the grease paint and all that stuff. It's brilliant. Kenny Beard says, how did you learn a guitar? Well, my brother learned the drums and my sister was learning the keyboards and I thought, well, I'll learn the guitar. That'd be good, wouldn't it? And then we could be like the Jackson Free. Um, but uh, so I had a few lessons at the very beginning. Um, after a while, I stopped having lessons and I just sort of became I sort of taught myself the rest of what I knew what I know now know I think I know um but the most formative sort of learning experience is playing in bands you really find out about yourself uh, I, was, I was playing in bands from when I was about 15 um you know sometimes just covers bands and whatever but the experience of playing to an audience is there's not much that can you can't you can't teach you can't teach uh, somebody how to cope with that <laughs> you know you just have to do it and learn on the on the road really so it was you know it's it's that's daunting as well but uh, that's the way to do it um yes no says what would be your hypothetical super band made up of a drummer a bassist a rhythm guitarist a lead guitarist and a singer the members can be dead or alive but you can only choose one member from each band okay that's good um has to be the drummer has to be John Bonham. Um, the bassist, I think I would choose Mark King from Level Forty Two. Rhythm guitarist, Malcolm Young. Lead guitarist, ooh, that's difficult. I put oh shit, I can't I can't have two people from Queen, can I? That's the problem. Lead guitarist. All right, I'll put Rory Gallagher here in as I oh, know. Rory Gallagher or Richard Thompson in? Oh, that's difficult. Maybe I'll put uh, maybe I'll put Malcolm on the subs bench for now. I'll put I'll put Richard Thompson as a rhythm guitarist and lead guitarist would be Rory Gallagher. Um, singer it's Freddie Mercury every time. Um, or Bon Scott. Shit, I don't know now. Damn it. Um, anyway, great question. Thanks. Yes, no. Tavis uh, Maples Den says, "What is the rockingest chord?" I used to think it was E. E is the best. Um, e is the best key for soloing in because you've got all this to explore. Um, and if you're on a, a, you know, a Les Paul, you've got 22 frets, so you can bend up to the high, high E, and you're you, you're there. But there's another. I think, I think it's got to be said that.
It's got to be A. A is the rockingest chord. And Icy Bird says, what's your favourite food? Well, I'll tell you, it's the... It, I like... Um, I like th- I like a lot of Thai food, but um, my favourite thing I think is probably I like a papaya salad, you know, a som tam salad. Oh, it's so delicious! Um, or I like a penne al arrabbiato, which is Italian, so delicious. It's just spicy tomato pasta, lovely, isn't it? Keep it simple. If you could have one of your guitar idols bequeath their number one to you when they pass on, whose guitar would it be? That's from Baby Hurley. Um, <clears throat> Well, I have had the privilege of playing Brian May's Red Special, or at least one of them. Um, I think it's too Brian. It's too Brizy. Um I'm not really a fan of SGs, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask um, Angus to part with his. Um, I would have loved um, Eddie Van Halen's uh, Frankenstrat, the red and white one. But I, if I had to choose one, I think I would ask. The legend Steve Jones, if he would uh, write me into his wheel, and I'll take his uh, white custom, but uh, white Les Paul custom that is. But I don't want any of those people to die. I've got my own guitars, and I'm quite happy with them. Thank you. Yeah, Jared. Sorry, <laughs> I, t- I tried to pronounce it with a, a sort of Eastern European thing, but it's not. It's just Jared. Um, he says, when you write a song, do you write melody or lyrics first? Uh, let me know your songwriting process. Thanks. Um, it's a good question. I don't know. It varies from time to time. I always think that songwriting is just a little bit like you do whatever, whatever. You just do whatever. Sometimes it comes naturally. Sometimes it doesn't. I think a lot of the time you end up like with a sort of... Um, I used to have this thing where... I say if I was trying to find... Um, a link between these two chords. What you could do. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll try and find a melody that threads between the two chords. You know, it's something like that, and then, and then you'd work on the lyrics or some sort of expression that fits into that. And then try and flesh out a story from that. Or sometimes it starts off with a poem. Sometimes it starts off with a riff, and then you're just looking for a. It's basically a top lining exercise where you you're looking for a, a melody that will work over an existing piece of music. That's how I do it with the darkness. Normally, my brother sends me like a backing track, and I'll just write the melody and the lyrics. A lot of that stuff happens. Um, but thanks for your question. I, I'm sorry I can't be more clear, but I just think there's no rules. Anything goes, really. Panama Jack, what day do your bins get collected? Would you change it to another day if you could? They've recently changed it where I live. You don't. There's no bin collection. I have to face the indignity of carrying the bin bag down the road and putting it in this special sort of bin bag storage area that's under the ground, and then they come and get it whenever they feel like it. I suppose it's better because foxes don't eat it and stuff. It used to be on Mondays, but they've changed it all now. Thanks, Panama Jack. Um, Biker Trucker says, Hey, Justin, how many cat suits do you own and what's your favourite one? How many guitars do you have? <laughs> Shit, that's two questions and too many questions. Um, I don't know about cat suits. I might have to go through and count them all. Um, my favourite one is going to be the the Christian Dior one, which is made out of sequins. I used to wear it on the back of the White Tiger when I used to play my solo over the arenas years ago. Um Guitars, I don't know. There's a few on the road. There's a few in storage. They're dotted around everywhere, really. I'm, I'm not much of a collector. They're all sort of players grade, but um, I just uh, sometimes I just need to have a guitar, at my, literally at my fingertips, and that's the way everybody should live, isn't it? Thanks a lot for your comments. Justin Hawkins, right again, again. Uh, Don't forget to like, subscribe, sign up for the alerts and watch one of these two videos. And I'll see you guys on the ice. Cheers.